Recording started. Hey everybody, this is the second video in my CCIE collaboration uh, home lab build video series. Uh, what I'm going to cover today is how to set up your virtual switches within your ESX server. Um, I am still at the phase where I have a virtual machine on my laptop running ESX. I have that because I want to show you working from the interface. Um, and then I also have my actual physical server out in garage that is running, and we will remote onto that in a few minutes so I can show you um, how to set it up once you're, you've gotten past the initial point. Now, with ESX server, you can set up your network interfaces in one of two fashions, just like any, anything else with, when it comes to route switch. You can have just regular straight access ports, which will host a single VLAN, or you can set up um, VLAN interfaces on your servers. Now, obviously, the advantage of that is, is you can have less network interfaces on your server and run virtual machines off of different VLANs. So let me show you what it looks like when you uh, take an ESX server um, and have just done the basic install. Let me go ahead and share my desktop. Okay, so this is my virtual ESX host sitting on a uh, on VMware workstation. So let's go ahead and log into it. Now I've done nothing with this server at this point. So this is what it would look like out of the box. And what you have here is, um, sorry, F2. So this thing's picking up an IP address uh, from DHCP. Now if we go down to manage the configure, configure management network, we can then statically assign the IP address on this thing. Um, that will be right here. We would go ahead and click set static address and then hit escape. Now, what you'll also notice here is this VLAN optional, and it's currently not set. Now, I have configured my switch port interfaces that are facing my physical server um, to be um, trunk ports. So by having set them up as trunk ports, I need to tell this what, I, what VLAN is my management network going to sit on. In this case, my home network is VLAN 10. I'm going to give this thing a VLAN 10 IP address, so I now need to tell it, you, your management interface is VLAN 10. So you put in 10 here. I, you know, I will set up an IP address in the 10 range. I, of course, I, again, I'm doing this from a virtual machine, but this will be done in my physical box. And then escape, escape. Go ahead and save everything, hit yes to reset. And that will now assign an IP address to the management network of the ESX in that VLAN. So now let's go ahead and go over to the physical server that I have now set up. So this is the vSphere client. So I'm going to go ahead and connect over to my physical server. Now, obviously, if I hadn't set this up for a VLAN, I would have one interface and that would be on the one access port off my, my uh, switch. But if we go to configuration networking, what you see now is I have my VM NIC 0. That is the IP address 10.0.0.200, and it is in the VLAN ID 10. Let's go ahead and click on the properties of this. Um, so we have the one V switch. Now, at this point, I can add multiple VLANs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new virtual machine um, it's, not, it's not actually adding virtual machines, it's adding a new network for virtual machines. And then I will tell it what VLAN I want it to be on. So for you guys doing CCIE collaboration, you're going to have a VLAN 5, 6, and 7. 5 will be for your headquarters, 6 will be for your branch 1, and 7, I'm sorry, 6 will be for your backbone, and 7 will be for your branch 1. Uh, there's other VLANs as well, but those are the only ones that you're going to be hosting servers for. So let's go ahead and set up uh, the VLAN 5. So we're going to go VLAN 5, and just give it a name, and then tell it what VLAN is it on. We're going to say VLAN 5. And you'll see it is now adding a new VLAN 5 with a VLAN ID of 5. Again, attached to a single network. So again, from this screen, we have the management network, VLAN 10, and the now VLAN 5, VLAN 5, all attached to one physical network interface. Now. The other thing I can do is, let's say, I, this server has four network interfaces. If I want to aggregate everything to multiple network interfaces, I can now tell this particular network that I want to add multiple NICs to it, and so I can add all four of them to this. So if we now go back to the original screen, you now see I have four physical network interfaces 
the VLAN 5 network and the management network that's on VLAN 10. Now, let's say that you don't want to go to the trouble of setting up VLANs on your ESX. That, that is A-OK -okay as well. Let's go ahead and go back in here and let's remove the, some of these network adapters. We're going to close this. What we're going to want to do is add a new networking. And again, this will be a virtual machine network. And what network interface would we like to connect it to? We'll say network interface one. And since we're going to put in no VLAN, this will just be an access port, and we can give this a name. So we'll call this VLAN six. And finished. Now you'll see I have network interface zero that has the VLAN five and the VLAN 10 off of it. And I now have network interface one that has another uh, virtual switch, but no VLAN tied to it. So anything that is attached to this, this virtual switch is going to just be connected directly to that network interface. Now, one of the things I highly recommend that you do is copying your ISOs to your ESX server. It's going to make the install process a lot less painful. Um, there are other fashions you can, you can get the media into your ESX. One of them is you, if you have a physical CD or DVD, you can stick it in the drive and you can tell it to look at the drive. Another option is you can map your vSphere client into your, your um, workstation that you're working off of so it can connect to the CD-ROM off my laptop, of course, and it's drawing the files across the network and it's going to be quite painful as well. So before you do anything else, I would highly recommend copying your um, ISOs up to your ESX server. Let me show you how you do that. Um, again, from configuration, we're going to go to storage. And I have two data stores on this server. Uh, I'm just going to go to the very first one. Um, you, you, you will probably only have one on your server, but in my case, I have two. Right click, browse the database. And now, you, now it just looks like any other file structure. I'm going to go ahead and add a new folder, and I'm going to call it ISOs. And now that I am, I'm going to click on the folder, and I'm going to click Upload. This is uploaded. This is downloaded. I'm going to go ahead and upload a file to this data store. So let me upload a file. The colon to access ISOs. And I'm obviously not going to spend the whole video showing you how long it takes to upload files, but um, I'm going to go ahead and copy up my server 2012. Uh, ISO because that is going to be my next video. So it's now copying. When that's finished, um, I'll be at the point where I can go ahead and install my first uh, Active Directory server, and then from there we will do uh, the first call manager. All right, if there's any questions, reach out to me and I will be happy to help. Thanks.